Welcome to Spotlight on Frazy. I'm your host, Hank Ludke. I'm here today with Lori Thorpe. Hi, Lori. Hey, hi, Hank. How are you? Tremendous. And yeah, we're tremendous, too. When we're going to be talking about community education. I know yes. last week we did a segment with uh, Pat Putz yes. on uh, GED. Yep. And now we're going to see what else is going on. Yes. We, and that's the fun part of uh, working in our area. We always have something going on, and we get to work with all kinds of community members. And somebody just asked the question about, do you have to be from Frazee to, um, to do something with community ed? So um, the thrilling part for us is, no, we just um, you don't have to live within the Frazee School District. Mm -hmm. Um, and and our district is such an interesting interesting shape, and we get to go out. Um, we have classes at different locations in mm -hmm. the community, and that's part of what community education does in districts throughout Minnesota and some other states have very uh, very healthy community ed systems too. So that's yeah. great. So we have a good time. So what's happening today? So what's happening? Well, a lot of you hopefully still have this for sure in your household. And we, mm -hmm. you know, some people keep it by the fridge. We have. Um, Mine's by the community club hotline. Yours by yours is by so the community call, club I can tell them. hotline. Yeah, you can be <laughs> one of our um, um, folks that helps disseminate the right information. So, in the back of it, right inside. Okay, front cover back cover registration form okay and you can call and register us or you can email us but right inside of that page there is a class start date list that is we try to make it um, kind of a handy thing for people and I use it myself too just to see kind of what's coming up so the first dates of a lot of classes are listed on that. So I want to take just a few minutes and talk about a couple things we have coming up. Go right ahead there. Alrighty. So um, at the end of March, March 31st, we have Social Security and Life After Work coming um, in a session. And that is a Saturday morning mm -hmm. session. So if you are of the age where, um, where that's pertinent to you that would be my age anywhere around my age I mean you know which is my age. you know five <laughs> zero okay or anywhere in there uh, Randy Suav from Ohio National is going to be coming and talking about how to kind of plan ahead to mm -hmm. make sure that you get uh, the, the maximum amount of benefits coming in that you can to your household wherever whether you're planning for Social Security benefits or if you have some retirement income of other types too. So that is Saturday, March 31st, and that's a morning session starting mm -hmm. at 9 a.m. Great. So we're really happy to have Randy coming in. And then I want to mention ahead of time too because um, a lot of our classes uh, can fill very quickly. Yes. And so that's a, a good thing in that um, we get a lot of interaction, but we want to make sure you get in the classes that you want. So. We have a Zumba exercise session two starting Monday, April 2nd, mm -hmm. and that is with instructor Daniil Shipman okay, at 6.15 p.m. And that's a one-hour session, and it's very popular. It's pretty full, but uh, give us a call if you're interested. That's been just spreading like crazy. It's crazy. It's just wild. 334-3181, option three is our phone number. And also, do I have time for one quick thing? Okay, defensive driving. If you need a four hour refresher, we have an eight hour coming up and we have a couple four hours coming up. One thing that's not in our catalog that has been added is on April 5th, we've added a daytime session, 12.30 to 4.30 here in Frazee. Give us a call if that's what you need to get done. All right. Well, thank you for being on the uh, the TV three with us. Yeah, we three, love three, it. Four, three, one, eight, one, yep. Option three. Option three. That's us. And you can talk to Lori or Community Ed. Yep. yep. And with that, We're glad to have you. We'll be right back for another segment of Spotlight on Frazy. Welcome back to Spotlight on Frazy. I'm your host Hank Ludke, and I'm here today with Jonathan Smith. Good to see Hi, you, Jonathan. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Jonathan is a Frazy City Administrator, Clerk, and Treasurer. Mm -hmm. And what I kind of wanted to talk to you a little bit about, John, was 
You're board member for the Minnesota Association of Small Cities. Yes. Which represents 287 cities yep. under 5,000 people in the state. Correct. Yeah, we are uh, you know, a state organization that uh, you know, uh, cities um, can choose to be members of. Uh, they pay a, a minimal fee based off population. Um, and, and what they get out of that is some representation, uh, actually quite a bit of representation uh, at the state level, uh, as well as the federal level. Um, we did do a trip to Washington, D.C. this this past year uh, to kind of go out and, and meet all of our congressmen and congresswomen as well mm -hmm. as our two senators. So, um, but, but the majority of our work is done at the state level. Um, we do a lot, of, a, a lot of lobbying for small cities, uh, like you said, under 5,000. Um, you know, some of our big accomplishments in the last couple of years and some of the big issues that we fought for was obviously local government aid. Yes. Uh, levy limits have been something. Um, also, uh, now there's some legislation coming out with more uh, requirements on budget reporting and things like that. Uh, so we're, we're hitting Redund that pretty Redundancy hit. of uh, things that yeah, we already do. Quite a, quite a bit of that. You know, um, two years ago, uh, if you remember when the, the LGA um, unallotment was going on, um, the small cities was, was very instrumental in, in getting the um, 1,000 and under, you know, out of that uh, unallotment because, you know, they, were, they obviously needed that money and, and uh, needed that to survive. So, uh, you know, we've been, uh, the association's been very, uh, very instrumental in, in a lot of those issues and we work pretty closely with uh, the League of Minnesota Cities <clears throat> which obviously represents all of Minnesota Cities. Uh, we also work with the Coalition of Greater Minnesota Cities as well. So, mm -hmm. And then you know we also we also work with the school districts, mm -hmm. townships, and counties. Yep. And when we talk about the money that we're, we're always, pro uh, you know, well you know you're gonna get so much money and then things change. Mm -hmm. And over the last 10 years, as I understand it, on all fronts, we've probably lost close to 50% of the funding mm -hmm. in one form or another, or in having increases done in what we do for less things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, the, the importance of it and, and what we do and, and the lobbying and, and you know, mm -hmm. being involved at the state level is, is, is just that, you know, making sure that, that we have the funding that, that we're supposed to get mm -hmm. um, and, and the importance of that to the local taxpayers and, and things like that is, you know, it, it helps us control our, levy, our levies and thus keeps taxes low, uh, the quality of life high um, and mm -hmm. things like that. So, um, you know, it, it's definitely important, you know, and I urge everybody, you know, that's listening and, and out there to, to definitely be involved and pay attention to, uh, you know, what's, what's happening at your state. Uh, the market value homestead credit, uh, you know, the cancellation of that and bringing yeah. in this exclusion. Uh, I think everybody's been uh, well aware of what, what impact that's had personally uh, to their, their tax statements and, and things like that. So I just encourage people to, uh, you know, get informed about it, kind of see what these issues are. Um, if they have any questions when it comes to, um, you know, local government stuff, uh, you know, I can definitely be a resource for them, and, and they're more than welcome to call our office with any questions. Um, Which is 334? <coughs> 4991. You got it. That's right. Um, but, yeah, you know, uh, again, the the organization, you know, phrasey has been a member for quite a while, uh, and we wouldn't be a member if, if it wasn't worthwhile and, and if we didn't believe in the cause uh, and we weren't fighting for, for other cities. You know, we well, we yeah. fight for Vergas. We fight, you know, we fight for Lake Park. We, we fight, fight for, for Ottawa. Wolf Lake. Wolf Lake. You know, um, all, all the small cities around us, you know, um, obviously there's benefits. Um, uh, to being a member as, as you're directly involved, but you know even not being a member uh, as a small city, you still get a benefit from that because you know we're we're fighting for the rights and and uh, and that for for everybody. So, well, I appreciate you being on the program, John. You know, and I know one last thing. You know, is like when we do uh, budgets and look at things. You know, we look five, ten years and further down the road. And when we get into a system with the state government on what they expect us to do for this money, and then they change the game plan after we've started on it, we're sitting out there, we've got money out on bonding, mm -hmm. and then we're trying to figure out how are we going to pay for the program that they started us on down mm -hmm. that road. Mm -hmm. But I'll leave you with that thought. <laughs> Thanks for being on the show, John. Yeah. Thank you, Hank. And with that, we'll catch you next week on Spotlight on Crazy.